Hi, so this last piece, I know it's so much, right? So this last piece of measures of variation is going to be the quartiles and box plots. And what's nice about the box plots is the box plot is going to be a direct result of the five number summary. And so when we talk about quartiles, we can always think of the median that cuts everything in half. But couldn't we take the half of the half and then the half of the half of the upper half, right? So we have a lower half, the middle. OK, so we have the half of the data. And then we have the lower half of the data and then the upper half of the data. <laughs> and those are the quartiles. So the first 25% is called the first quartile, Q1 or quartile 1. The second quartile, otherwise known as the median, is 50%, right, the real half of the data. The upper half of the data is going to be the third quartile, or Q3, and that's 75% of the data. So when we think of the median, we always say the median is half of the values lie below it, half of the value lies above it. But with um, the, low, the first half of the data, which is the 25%, we say the same idea where it's tw if it's the lower, 20, the lower half, it'll be 25% is below it, and then 75% is above it. If we're in Q3, where that's 75%, that means 75% is below it, and then, that's right, you guessed it, 25% is above it. So the half, we always, I always say it's the half and the half, the half, the half, the half, right? <laughs> Lower half, upper half, real half, right? Um, and if we include the minimum value, because again, the range, right, the variation, um, Part, the first variation we learned about was the range, and that took into account the lower, va the lowest value of the data and the highest value of your data. So if we include that lowest value and that highest value, otherwise we call a minimum or a maximum, and those three quartiles, Q1, Q2, Q3, we actually make what we call the five number summary. So the five number summary is exactly those values in order lowest to highest. So the first one is the minimum, the first quartile, the median, otherwise Q2, right? the upper half value, and then the maximum. So they're all there, these five numbers, and they make a really cool box, box type and whisker plot in the end. So how do we find these values? Well, similarly, how we found the median, right? We found those locators, right? We said, where is the half? If we had even data, we would have two middle values, and we would take the average. If we had odd number of data, we had only one middle value, and that was it, and we grabbed it. So that's going to be the same way. We're going to try to find the lower half, the half of the half, which will be 25%, and then the upper half, which is the upper half of the half, and then um, that's 75%. So we'll find locators for each. The 25%, uh, the first quartile locator is going not to be a half times the end, but 0.25. And then for the upper half will be 0.75. And it has to do with that percentage, 75%. And then we go to those values. Now we know that if it's going to be an even number of data, I have to take the mean of the two middle values. And then if it's going to be odd, I know I can just take the nearest whole number. OK. OK, so let's go ahead. And, and that's just a normal, that's just average. So we know with 16, we're always going to have two middle values, right? So if we've tried to find the five number summary for the 16 models weights, we can go ahead and do that. We do know already some information, right? We can easily see here's, I'll, I'll put on the appendix, we have a min, Q1, the median, Q3, and the max. I already know three of these, right? I already know that the minimum is 85. The maximum is 138, and the middle we found to be, in several different ways, right, we found it to be 110. So all that's really left for us is to find Q1 and Q3. Okay, let me draw a little appendix line. So this means to find Q1, right, I have to identify that I have 16 data and that I have to use my locator. Now I can't use, I can't divide by two, 
like I usually want to and divide by 2 plus 1 because it's not dividing by 2 is 50 percent it's half I'm doing quarter now so I have to divide by the first quarter or multiply by 25 percent so I would do point and let me erase this let me put locator I like to put L sub 1 just so we know we're in quartile 1 for the first locator and that'll be 25%, so 0.25 times n, which is 16. And so 16 divided by 4, sorry, 16 times 0.25, or in other words, 16 divided by 4 is going to be 4. And again, this is going to be the fourth data value. Now, once again, here, if we read it, if L is a whole number, in our case it is, then we have then you have an even number of data right so you have two middle values and you're going to go ahead and take that one and the one next to it and then divide by two okay so this means that here is the fourth data and then l1 plus one is going to be four plus one which is the fifth data value so q1 is going to be equal to the fourth data value plus the fifth data value divided by two. So if I go ahead and just count, right? One, two, three, four, five. So here's our fourth data value and our fifth. So I would take 85 plus 98 and divide by two. So again, remember the locators just give you the location, the position of the data value. And so if I went ahead and just put this in the calculator, parentheses on the numerator, 85 plus 98, close the numerator, divided by 2, I get 91.5. So Q1 is 91.5. So let me go ahead and highlight that. Okay, there's that Q1. So this means that Q3 is going to be, again, we have 16 pieces of data, and our locator for 3 would be, again, we it's a 75% mark, so we would take 0.75 of the data values. And we assume it'll be, we have even number of data, so we assume we're going to take the two middle of the upper half and take the average, right? So this is um, 0.75 times 16 is actually 12, and this is the 12th data value. Okay, so 12 means if I have a whole number, that means I have two middle values and I have to take the average of the two middle. So this means that L3 plus 1 is 12 plus 1, which is the 13th data value. So Q3 is actually going to be equal to the 12th and 13th data value divided by 2. So if I go ahead and just count, here's 5, so 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So here is 12th and the 13th. So I have 115 plus 115 divided by 2. And we can see when you take the same number, that it's going to be 115. And so 115 is your third quartile. So you either can write it like this, you know, as a list, or we write it as um, not a list, but more of like an array. So it could be we write the minimum first comma 91.5 comma 110 comma 115 comma 138.
And so we write it as like a little array with commas in between each value. Since there's five, we assume it's low to high, min, Q1, median, Q3, and max. Okay, so now that we found these values, let's go ahead and now represent it visually. A box plot is the visual representative of the five number summary. So just like the histogram represents the frequency table, the box plot represents the five number summary. So if we just take a look at an example, let's just look a little, we see that there's a vertical axis, no, I'm sorry, a horizontal axis, there's no vertical axis, just the horizontal. And the box plot lies a little bit above it, right? There's some space in between. So the first thing you're gonna do is draw this just like we did with the histograms and bar charts. We drew, always did the vertical axis first. We do the axis first, always. And then we'll go ahead and mark the tick marks. And then what we'll do is then mark where the five number summary lies and then we'll draw a box around the quartiles and then lines to the minimax. So it's a pretty nice little plot. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is obtain the five number summary, draw the horizontal axis first as usual with tick marks, draw a box around the cues, mark min and max and do lines, and then we have it. So let's take our five number summary from up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my little array that I have here and I'm just gonna copy it down. You don't have to, you can always flip pages. Okay, there you go. So I'm gonna go step by step. So the first step is go ahead and draw a vertical axis. And I like to do a big one, it's nice. And I have a lot of room here, so maybe I'll draw it really low like that. Um, notice that my data is 85 to 138. So I need good tick marks. Don't, I can't mark them all the five number summary. I have to like be consistent, right? So if I start at like 80, I can go 90, 100, you know, and just do that. In fact, let's do that. Let's start here at 80. And this we could put down here as the weight in pounds. So 80, oops, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, and 140. So that looks nice, and then I can always erase the extra. So here's my x-axis, and I, I decided to do it in tens just because it gave like a good little tick marks in tens. I can see that the sub tick marks here, 85, 95, you know, all the fives and, and such. Okay, the second part would be is now to go ahead and identify the cues. So if I had um, my Q1, Q2 and Q3. So 91.5. So that would be like about here and do it above like here. You know, I usually do a little dot there. And then Q2 is 110. So 110 is over here and do a little dot. And again, you want it above the x axis. So you want it to have some space. And Q3 is 115, which is right here. So let's go ahead and draw a box. So I'm gonna do my best. Oh, I don't wanna do that. <laughs> box. See, in my, if you do it on the iPad, it actually works out really nice. So you're gonna do a rectangular box around Q1 and Q3. Draw a line where the median is. So essentially here's Q1, here's the median, and here's Q3. Now mark the min, so the minimum is 85, so it's right here, and then go ahead and do a big circle like that, and mark the max, which is 138, which is way over here, like that. Okay, go ahead now, once you mark the min and the max, draw a line from the graph to the um, min, so, oops, like that, and then blue, let me try it over here, like that. 
So you can see here that it looks really nice and it looks, if I scroll up to the actual example, it looks similar to this where the graph is a Above the horizontal axis, it's nicely marked with tick marks, and it, there's a box around the Q1, Q3, a line where the median is, and lines out to the min and max. So it looks like this. So it it actually came out really nice. Um, use a ruler if you want, um, but the idea is to be able to plot this five number summary and say something about it. So I'm going to go ahead and just put the numbers here. So this one's going to be 85, 91.5, 110, 115, and then 138. So I can see that right here, my data is like peaking here and then tailing out. Right. So let me see, like that. See how it goes up and it's going to tail out to the max. And we know that the median is where it's going to peak. You know. And tail out. So we call this, um, when it does that, it's going to be skewed a little to the right. And so um, we just have to, because it's off to the right and it tails off to the right. But we had to talk about that more in chapter 11 with a normal distribution. But you could see how it's not symmetric. You could see that it's kind of the medians, everything's kind of being weighed over to past, you know, the 110 weight. But um, but and we can see that the 138 weight is really outside of the other scope of the models, but yet always should be included because um, it looks like it can be, it can stay within, it's still kind of near there, but you can see it's kind of far off and it's going to trail off over there to the 138. So that is actually the um, box plot. So what I would like to do is next is enter in this raw data here from example um, 921 into the calculator. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to get all those pieces of data through the calculator. So if we go ahead and just clear out and we go here, you can see that you have some sort of statistics buttons up here. PRB is probability, data right here, stat. So if you just click data, don't worry, just click around. You're not going to make it explode, right? It brings you to a list. So hit data, brings you to a list. So I hit data, and now in list one, go ahead and list all 16 weights. So I'm going to put 85, 85, and I'm going to put four 85s, right? And notice it tells you what data value you're on. So I'm on the fifth data value. So I'm at 298, 1100, 3 one, 4 110s, 1 more, 3 115s. and then two 138s. Okay, so once you enter in the data, notice that if I go up to the last 138, it says 16. So I know I've entered 16 data, so I'm okay. Next, you'll see above the data button is the word stat. So go ahead and select stat, which is green with green. So hit now hit, and you can follow down here in the buttons. Hit second stat, second data, which gives you stat, just like down here. And we're going to do a one of our stats because we only have one list, right? One list. Hit enter, and then it brings you to this new menu. And it, it's asking you, well, where'd you put your data? You get to have three lists. Which one did you put the data in? I said, oh, list one. That's right. So I hit enter. Um, put For frequency, we'll put one because we don't have a frequency table. We just have a list. So just hit one. And then hit calc. So enter. So you're just hitting enter. So it tells you the number of data. And look what it tells us. It says the average is 106 which we got the standard deviation 
here, the S is standard deviation. That's the other part you need. And here's your five number summary. The min is 85. That's what we got. The Q1, 91.5, we got. Median, 110, that's what we got. Q3, 115, that's what we got. And the max, 138. So just by going to data and putting in the list, going to second data, which brings you to stat, hit one for one var stats, pick the list you entered in your data, leave frec at one, and then calc, hit enter gives you all this information and you're like why did you do that there was just why didn't we do this in the first place and I say yeah do you use it you know part of this class is it is a math class so we want to show you and have you have a lot of background in the math part and really be familiar with what we're doing in the math like what we're, what is the calculator doing like what kind of formulas are in there well you just did all the formulas so you now you know how your calculator works and so now you have a better understanding of where these values come from. So the box plot can be easily drawn. If we just went to the calculator and put in this list and got these five number summary, these values, we could have easily just went uh, directly to the box plot down here. Okay, so if you had a frequency table, so let's do the frequency table with the weights. Let me see if I can find it right here here we go let's put this in the calculator so let me go over back to data and hit data again so when I hit data one more time I just wanted to clear the list so I hit one because I want and then it clears my list so it's really nice for this one I'm gonna put the weights here in list one and the frequencies in list two so I'll put now just one time the 85, the 98, the 100, the 110, the 115, and the 138. Okay. Now, once you enter in only the six unique weights, go to list two which is here, see here is list one, right here. If you go over here to list two is right next to there, put in these frequencies in list two. We had four models that weighed 85 pounds. We had two models that weighed 98. We had one model that weighed 100. We had four at 110 and three at 115 and two at 138. So notice if we scroll up here, we see the table in our notes in the calculator and just make sure they align if we have six weights you have six uh, rows of frequency so notice all the frequency it's not raw data we're not just listing all raw we're doing actually here are the unique weights and here are the counts for each of them so how do you do a one var stats for the frequency table well we can easily go back to um, stat second data do a one var stat as you just do exactly what you were doing before, except now you have frex, right? You have frequencies. Your frequencies are not in list one, they're in list two, right? Right here, list two. So move the cursor over to list two, hit enter, then hit calc. And lo and behold, look at this. We did not do a raw data, we did a table, a frequency table where the unique weights were in list one, frequencies in list two, and if we scroll all the way down, we get the same exact five number summary and the same average and the same standard deviation, right? So um, in order to enter in a frequency table in the calculator, I just wanna reiterate that you would go to data and put in the values in list one, frequencies in list two, and then when you go to your stat menu, you would select frequency and put select the list in which has the frequency. Most likely your values, your data will always be in list one, but the counts would be in another list. Okay.
And I hope that's helpful. You're encouraged to use the calculator when possible because that's how the world is now. We use technology. Feel free to use the tables like for the standard deviation up here. So feel free to use the tables with the standard deviation like this or you can go ahead and just go directly to the calculator and put it in a list, put the peanut butter jar prices in a list and run a one var stats on it. All right.